Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Now I wanted to take a moment and make this video and talk about the equipment I use to film my videos and uh, kind of what goes into the content that you see on my channel. Uh, I figure it's probably helpful for some of you out there who are looking to get into this yourself. Um, and I've also gotten a few questions here and there about what kind of camera I use, what kind of drone I use, and things like that. So I wanted to kind of cover that in this video. So why don't we go ahead and get into it. Now, the first thing is the camera right here that I'm filming this on. This is the Fujifilm X-T4. Um, I've been a longtime fan of Fuji cameras. I used to shoot Canon, and that was back in the DSLR days at a 70 Mark II, and it was just way too bulky. So I was looking for something that was compact and easy to bring with me. That was kind of key. I found that I was leaving the Canon at home or in the truck because it was just too bulky to hike around with and things like that. So Fuji kind of popped up on my list because they have a nice compact package and their lenses for the price and even the kit lens are uh, super high quality lenses. Um, so I decided to try it out and then ever since the X-T2, uh, I've been a big fan of them. And then I recently upgraded to the X-T4 for a little bit more video friendly features such as the pop-out screen, in-body stabilization, and um, some better video modes. Now. I'm not gonna go into the specs of the Fujifilm X-T4 because there's lots of videos out there that you can watch on that, but basically what it boils down to is it's a great hybrid camera. It shoots really good stills and it shoots um, really good video and that was needed for me because I didn't want to have two cameras or anything like that. I wanted to have a kind of a one camera system and this checked all of the boxes for me while still not being super expensive. Um, <clears throat> I have three lenses for the Fujifilm X-T4. I have the one I'm shooting on right now, which is the 10 to 24 F4. It's a really good, just wide angle, good landscape lens. It's especially good for vlogging and doing video because you can get that nice wide angle. Um, I have the 18 to 55 F2.8 to F4 kit lens. Uh, I've absolutely loved this lens because it's super compact. It's fast on the wide end and it's um, really sharp for a kit lens, and it has in-body uh, stabilization, so it's like a really good all-around lens. Most of the times, kit lenses are, well, garbage, but in Fujifilm's case, this one really, I mean, it's awesome. I all You can look at my Instagram. All of the pictures on my Instagram, save for maybe a few, are taken with that lens, so I've absolutely loved it, um, and I just recently got this 10-24 to and then the third lens that I have is a Rokinon um, 12 millimeter f 2.0. This is what I use for astrophotography and shooting, you know, night scenes like that just because it's wide and it's fast, um, but primarily astrophotography. And to complement the X-T4, I use a Rode Video Micro um, external mic. I like that it's super compact and small and it doesn't require an external battery, which is kind of key. I have so many things that I charge and have to charge before I go out on an adventure. It's nice to have one less thing to worry about charging. And then finally, um, I have a few tripods. I have my Davis and Sanford um, carbon fiber tripod. Super light, packs up small. Uh, it wasn't super expensive, so I've absolutely loved this tripod. And then I have just like your Gobi um, small tripod for sitting on the ground or wrapping around a branch or something like that. Now, another camera that I employ is the DJI Pocket. I think it used to be called the Osmo Pocket. They maybe dropped the Osmo off of it. But uh, this is something that I don't use a ton. Um, I've used it in the building of my DIY camper. Uh, one really awesome feature is that it can do kind of these motion time lapses. So you can set like an in point and an out point and it will slowly pan the camera kind of to wherever you set those points and shoot a time lapse along the way. So it makes it for some really dynamic time lapses. Uh, that feature is really awesome. Another uh, good use for the Osmo uh, Pocket is on the motorcycle because it's so small and compact and it shoots really awesome video for the size of the sensor and how small it is. So it's a really potent tool to take with you when you're trying to go fast and light like on a dirt bike or on the motorcycle when uh, space is at a premium. So I'm actually itching to get out and use it some more here coming up on some trips. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of just another tool in the arsenal that I have. 
The next tool, um, I don't really use a ton, but it's the GoPro Hero 7 Black. I use it more so on the drone, which we'll get into in a moment. But uh, the main use for the GoPro for me is on my helmet, on the motorcycle, up here on the chin. Uh, that's how I record all of the video for um, those kind of motorcycle trips. I plug a external mic into it so you can hear my voice nice and clear. Um, and there's really nothing better for the job than a GoPro. Now, getting into the drones, um, this is kind of an old hobby of mine. I've been flying and building drones, geez, since like 2014, so six to seven years now. Um, I used to race them and used to build a lot more of them myself on the FPV drone side. Uh, don't do that as much anymore, but it's been really fun getting back into that hobby and uh, incorporating that FPV footage into the recent videos that I'm making. So that is a home-built um, drone. It's a Shen Drones Ichabod um, frame and then kind of just piecemeal electronics to get uh, the desired flight characteristics that I was looking for on it. Uh, the GoPro Hero 7 Black is what I shoot with on that currently. Does a phenomenal job for a GoPro shooting at 4K. 30. Um, I mean, as you've seen in some of my videos, I think the footage that comes out of it is pretty awesome. But uh, that was built as a long range rig, so I can fly pretty far away and uh, do those cool things like surfing down ridges and stuff. But uh, yeah, the FPV hobby, super fun. Um, I'm stoked to be getting kind of back into it and incorporating more of that footage into the videos that I bring to my channel. The other drone in my arsenal is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. This is kind of like the workhorse um, drone for me. It folds up nice and compact, which again, I, I love things that are small and compact and easy to bring with me and don't take up much space because in the extended cab Tacoma, space becomes um, limited when you have uh, you know me and the wife in there and you're packing for a couple of days. So <clears throat> the Mavic 2 is awesome. The quality of footage that comes out of it is great. No complaints there. Uh, low light could be a little bit better, but that's kind of the price you pay for a smaller drone uh, with a smaller sensor. Battery life is awesome, and uh, there's really nothing else out there that can even compete with a DJI. They're just super easy to fly. They produce great results, take great images, and take great video. So I definitely love the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, the last drone in my fleet that I use is the Skydio 2. Now, I picked this drone up because of its self-flying capabilities, the ability to basically follow and track the subject and also avoid obstacles, a little dust flying through there, um, avoid obstacles. That was super key for me because uh, I needed a way to try and film when I was out on the motorcycle and uh, get shots while I'm driving in the truck and I have to pay attention to, well, driving in, you know, not hitting trees or driving off the road. Um, so the Skydio 2 has been super awesome in catching these dynamic shots when I'm in areas where I can't actually control the Mavic 2. Um, you can set the Mavic 2 to do, you know, certain um, kind of like cable cam style shots where it'll fly from point A to point B and things like that, but um, you c it's not nearly as good, or I, I guess it's not re even remotely as good as the Skydio 2 is at avoiding obstacles and flying really close proximity to trees and things like that. So that's been awesome to have, especially on the motorcycle when I can't actually control the drone. I can just get it up in the air and then it'll follow me on the motorcycle until I decide to land it and it'll capture awesome footage along the way. Now the last tool in my arsenal is probably something most people have and that is a cell phone. For me it's an iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max and phones these days just shoot phenomenal quality video. Um, you can get away with a cell phone on a lot of things. There are people who have built their entire YouTube channels and do all of their content with cell phones. So definitely a very powerful tool. Um, I used to shoot a lot more on the iPhone. I've been trying to shoot more on the XT4 just to get a little bit higher quality footage, you know, that depth of field. But I will sub in the iPhone from time to time, uh, especially if the, the camera here is recording, you know, like a time lapse or something like that. When it's occupied, I'll use the iPhone to capture footage while this one's being used for another purpose. And it's also a great tool to have just in a pinch. Sometimes I might walk out to somewhere and I'll forget the camera in the truck or whatever, but I'll usually always have my phone on me so I can still use it to capture content and it 
creates video to such a you know high degree for a cell phone that it's pretty usable in most all of the videos I make and especially for you know most stuff you put on YouTube as well so if you're out there and you're looking to start creating content if you have you know a modern cell phone that's going to be enough to get your start and start putting content out there and then figure out kind of what you want to do, uh, what tools you want to add to kind of your own arsenal and um, really see what works for you. I definitely recommend starting with the phone first and then uh, working your way up from there. So that's it for me. That's a look at the gear that I use to make these videos. Now, I don't always use everything you see in this video. It kind of just depends on what I'm doing. If I'm on the motorcycle, maybe I will leave the camera at home and I will just bring um, the Osmo and maybe the Skydio with me. If I'm going out in the truck, then maybe I'll have more gear with me. So it just kind of depends. Um, I like to have these options to have different unique perspectives that I can bring to you in my videos and have um, kind of gear that works for different situations and different trips. It's taken me, you know, some time to build up to what I have now. It definitely didn't happen overnight. It's happened over, you know, the last four or five years as I've just been getting into video and things like that. I've been shooting photos for 11 years now, so cameras have kind of always been a thing that I've had. And as I, um, I mentioned, drones have been kind of a hobby for quite some time, so they kind of just all come together into producing this content for you guys here. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I hope this video was at least informative and maybe helpful for you. Um, definitely subscribe because there'll be more videos to come in the future and uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and uh, stick around because there'll definitely be more content to come. So I'll catch you guys in the next video.